Okay, video number 11. This is the big boy. This is the one you've been waiting for. I'm sure this is the passport video. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a long one. It's going to be intense. So basically, the passport is sort of like the, the big, huge key to basically everything when it comes to killing contracts. Okay, so, so getting the passport sorted out, we're going to go over in all of this. Okay, the passport is like here's all your contracts the passport is like is like a huge missile coming in here and going boom to some degree going through here i mean obviously it's the citizenship one mainly right but it's so it's so all-encompassing and it's so huge i mean it wipes out taxation it wipes out uh, your marriage license to some degree it, it, it pretty much to some degree literally wipes out like everything or at least blows out like massive chunks of the foundation of a lot of these different contracts uh, uh, voter registration you can't vote anymore after you do this uh, unless you just show up on the voter day and like close them to let you vote uh, but like in the books and stuff like that it says that you're not really supposed to be allowed to vote, right? So, um, so this is this is the big Kahuna of all big Kahunas, okay? And and the only thing that you really need to get started on this process is you need you don't need them, but if you want the 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 full five star passport, you're going to need your long form birth certificate. You could always try to get a four star now and then just get another one later, a five star if you want. Four star is really, really good. But this video is going to be all about how to get the five star, the big, big boy. Like you get pulled over in your car and the cop just lets you go pretty much no matter what, unless you're crashing into people or doing something crazy. Uh, diplomatic immunity. You're technically a foreign diplomat to United States. So all their laws, all their rules, it's basically a card. It's a little card. Uh, we're going to go over what it looks like that basically makes you, it's the official, uh, it's the official, official, official thing that makes you entirely immune to all, uh, statutes and basically everything under the sun, moon and stars. You whip that bad boy out and, uh, nobody can touch you. So, uh, I will teach you how to do that. So first thing I want to do is I want to show you what one looks like. This is from, uh, Wikipedia. So, one of the things you should find interesting about this is uh um I'm not sure if you can if I'm if my picture's in the way of showing you this. Let's see. Anyways, you can find some pictures for yourself if you can't see this for some reason on the bottom left. There's a string of numbers right here, and there's a string of numbers over here. Uh, and then on the back, oh my God, on the back, there's like 8 trillion strings of numbers. So you got to think to yourself, like, uh, there, there's so many strings of numbers. There's a string of number here, the passport card info. There's a string of numbers down here, 1-102781-0. There's a string of numbers here, m dash. 6131821-07. There's a string of numbers here. I can't even tell if it goes up or down. 43309, and then maybe another string of numbers, W27S plus sign. And then on the back, there's a million different numbers, just so many fucking numbers. Uh, back of passport card. Yeah. So here is an image uh, that shows the back of a passport card. You can't really see it, but you can see it better here. Look at how many strings of numbers there are all down here. I, PUSA, C, 0, 3, 0, 0, numbers, numbers, and then less than, less than 10, less than 30, less than B, 22, less than 4, 9, 8, 8, 1, uh, USA, and then there's another string of numbers, and then there's traveler, and then there's happy. Probably first name, last name, happy traveler. This is just an example, right? There's two, C, two C L eight up top here. There's another set of numbers here, nine one one eight two. Uh, valid for uh, 
international land and sea travel between the United States, Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean and Bermuda. Okay. Um, this is your the same number as the front, probably. This is the passport card number, right? But but we can see here there's one, two, let's say three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, eight strings of numbers, probably something like that on a passport card. What do they all mean? Where do they all go? What are they all connected to? What kind of contracts are there? Uh, very interesting. You, I haven't, I haven't gone that far into researching all of this, um, but you can. Now, the main thing we're going to be talking about here is right here. I think you should be able to see my cursor. Uh, if not, for some reason, let's see, can you see my cursor? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay, good. So right here, you see this little one, two, three stars. So this represents what kind of passport that you have, right? And the four and the five star is what we're going for. The three star is not impressive. I think the three star still means U.S. citizen. So the four and the five star are two different levels of state national, non-U.S. citizen state national, right? The four star, as far as I know, and again, you can't find this information anywhere, so call it a theory uh, if you want. But as far as I can tell from mountains and mountains of research, the four star is a state national with a lower diplomatic immunity. The five star is a state national with a higher level of diplomatic immunity. So the four star is still a big jump up. Uh, four star is a whole hell of a lot easier to get than a five star. I have a five star passport uh, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it and in each individual step as best I can. Uh, if you don't understand this process or you don't understand anything as you're going along with this process, you should uh, go straight to the grocery store, pick yourself up a nice girthy cucumber and jam it straight up your fucking ass, you stupid fuck. I don't care. I don't care. This course is free. I don't give a fuck. If you don't get it, turn off the course, go jam a cucumber up your ass. Uh, I don't know. Go go to sleep uh, on a park bench. Uh, I don't know. I don't care. So review the video again. Uh, there's going to be some other resources I'm going to show you. Uh, there's going to be all sorts of different things I'm going to show you. Uh, your misunderstandings are not my responsibility. Again, as I described at the beginning of the course, uh, if, you wanna, if you do message me, uh, like I said, it better be an offer for a whole shitload of money because if it's not, you're getting fucking blocked and reported. So just being clear, don't waste my fucking time, okay? Uh, you want you want me to help you with your passport? No problem. Uh, uh, $40,000. You want to pay me $40,000? I'd be more than happy. I will literally polish your dick, grab onto it, and walk you through the entire process for $40,000. So... Uh, more than happy to work for somebody out there. You know, that's $40,000 right now. I don't know where inflation is going to go. Uh, this is 3.40 p.m. on March, or I'm sorry, on uh, June 26, 2022. So you can just uh, add to an inflation calculator uh, between this point in time and wherever you're at, what $40,000 is, and that's how much it'll cost for me to hold your dick and walk you through the whole process. So if you'd like, to, if you'd like me to, to do that with you, please hit me up. Please send me a message. We'd be more than happy to help you uh, get through this entire process and give you a nice big fat ass heart on and a five-star pro uh, passport in the process. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over, this is a, this is a U.S. citizen passport, these little three stars at the top. Um, you, 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 this is not good. You don't want this. This is pretty much worthless, okay? Uh, the four and the five star is really what you want. Uh, I'm, I may be able to find you a photo of what one looks like. Three star. Um, fuck. Ah, here's one. $1,200. Um, 5000 I don't know what that is. So this is what a five-star passport looks like. Um, you see one, two, three, four, five. That's exactly what mine looks like. You have the five stars at the top in the middle. Um, uh, that's what it's going to look like, okay? Uh, when you get your passport back after doing this process correctly. Um, okay.
let's get into it. First, we'll go through the theory. So the first and foremost thing is that I do want to give credit where credit is due, and I want to do it in every single way possible. So the first one I want to do is uh, Copper Moonshine Stills is the person to go to in terms of if you want to learn how to do this entire process in terms of the DS11. The DS11 is the... Um, the actual application for a US passport. This is the DS-11. Uh, they've recently changed it, adding uh, X gender. Again, if, if you only men and women have rights. So if you would like to uh, get a state national passport and say anything besides men and women, it probably will fuck up your passport dramatically because only men and women have rights. So if you decide you wanna put, you know, non-binary shooting star on here, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. There's a good chance that you might get a five-star passport, but it might not do a whole lot for you. So uh, just giving you the heads up on that. Uh, again, you're welcome to do whatever you want. You're welcome to uh, jam a nice fat cucumber up your ass uh, or do anything else that you'd like to do. I'm not here to tell you what to do. So um, this is the DS-11. Uh, you can download it for free off of the internet. Uh, you can download it and print it, and we're going to go through every single fucking box on this entire thing. It's going to take fucking forever, uh, and I'll show you how to do it. So it's all based off of Copper Moonshine Stills. So it's coppermoonshinestills.com, and then if you scroll down on the main site, he sells fucking Copper Moonshine Stills. He sells Moonshine Stills. Uh, if you go all the way down to the bottom... Uh, he has a link here on the left. It's uh, It says, Beat the Law, Diplomatic Immunity, State Citizen Passport, right? Now, the link to that is on my resources page, and it's coppermoonshinestills.com slash id71.html, okay? Uh, he says, I have little time, so please do not contact me about this information. If you don't understand it, then do not do it. Exactly. State Citizen Passport. Uh, click here to download. Now this is cool. You click here and you actually can download an entire, uh, document that is an offline version of, um, the entire thing, right? And it's got the laws. It's got, um, uh, theory. It's got, uh, all sorts of good stuff. You are below. You are not any of the below. It's got a lot of the stuff that we've already gone over in this course. It's got the birth certificate. Uh, it's got all sorts of good stuff. It's got nationality. It's got what the different passports look like. I mean, this thing is fucking awesome. So uh, this is definitely something that I would um, recommend that you look over very, very thoroughly. And this is actually the portion that we're going to be doing together right now. So... Um, Okay, so let's see. Is there any other theory that we need to go over? So this website here, this is travel.state.gov, and this is the U.S. Department of State Bureau of Counselor Affairs. They're talking here about certificates of non-citizen nationality. The Department of State occasionally receives requests for certificates of non-citizen state, uh, non-citizen national status pursuant to blah, blah, blah. Um, as the title indicates, only a person who's a non-citizen U.S. national, i.e. a U.S. national but not a U.S. citizen, may apply for such a certificate. Um, it's a relatively small amount of people that acquire U.S. nationality without becoming U.S. citizens. Uh, the, 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 the particular statutes, which is um, this right here, this is uh, 8 U.S.C. 1452 Certificates of Citizenship or non uh, U.S. non-citizen national status procedure, right? If you go down to Section B, uh, application to Secretary of State for Certificate of Non-Citizen National Status Proof of Oath of Allegiance, a person who claims to be a national but not a citizen of the United States may apply to be to the Secretary of State for a Certificate of Non-Citizen National Status. Now, there are other types of statuses, like I said before, but they're all just smoke and mirrors. Basically, this is the one that that you're going to want to go for. It's the state national, U.S. national, or state citizen. There's different ways of saying the same thing, right? Um, now, national, by definition, this one actually has an actual definition, which is impressive. You don't see an actual definition that often. The term national means a person owing permanent allegiance to a state, right? That's what the word national means in the actual U.S. code, okay? So... 
Um, you have to have proof to the satisfaction of the Secretary of State that the applicant is a national but not a citizen in the United States and uh, that you were born outside of the District of Columbia or its outlying possessions, taking and subscribing before an immigration officer within the United States, blah, blah, blah. So this is the, the overall process here. It's talking about the process a little bit. Um, Anyways, we're going to close that one. Uh, another thing that's really important to know before we get into this whole process, we do have the United Nations, which we all know that they're not really as great as, as they, they tout themselves to be. But they do have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which I believe, uh, who wasn't that Teddy Roosevelt's wife that wrote this? I think it, who wrote? Anyways, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt's wife that wrote this, and then it got picked up by the... Uh, the UN. So uh, if you go down on the uh, United Nations um, Declaration of Human Rights, this is a this is a universal declaration of human rights for all human beings throughout the entire planet. If you go to Article 15, Article 15 says every number one says everyone has the right to a nationality. And if you look, this is straight from the UN.org, Article 15, uh, number one. Uh, Everyone has the right to a nationality. And then number two, no one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality nor denied the right to change his nationality. This is why I was telling you, these, these organizations, they literally are just sitting there waiting for you to send them documentation. It's not a, this is not some big, huge fucking deal. You're going to be like, oh my God, freaking out. Like, can I do this? Should I do this? Are they going to fight me? Am I going to get in trouble? All this stuff. The answer is no. They don't give a fuck, dude. Well, they probably give a fuck, but they're not going to behave as though they do. Uh, it violates Article 15 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And if by some weird thing you do have a problem with some of this stuff, you can use this and say, dude, like, I tell you what my nationality is. You don't tell me what my nationality is. And that's really how it actually works. You, you're telling the IRS your nationality and where you're located and where you're a resident, and where you're domicile, how much money you made from where you, you know, and then you think of like the Miranda rights, like when you get arrested, you always see on cops and stuff like that, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. I mean, really, if you want to step back and think about all this stuff, you just talk too fucking much. <laughs> you talk too fucking much and you don't ask questions about definitions of words, phrases, and terms. Uh, that, that's pretty much the, the full-blown ultimate breakdown of the reason why you're a slave and you have no rights and you're fucked. And the reason why you have to uh, get uh, a permit to carry a firearm in public, which is hilarious. Um, so Article 15, everyone has the right to a nationality and no one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality nor denied the right to change his nationality. So uh, you, can, you can get your five-star and then the next week, you can submit a new one and get a two-star or a three-star or a four-star. And then you can submit another one the next week and get a four-star. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. There's nothing stopping you. Nothing at all, okay? So, um, uh, we already went over what national means. It means a person owing permanent allegiance to a state. Uh, it proves that you're in the state and you're living in the state, you're domiciled in the state, you're residing in the state, and it basically is the final blow of the evidence that proves that you're not living in the the District of Columbia. Okay. You can still work for the District of Columbia. If you if you're a state national and you wanna and you're working for the government, like let's say I was telling you in an earlier video, um, you know, I'll teach you how to still pay privilege tax on money that you're making as a contractor for any sort of government contracts, such as if you're a defense contractor or something like that. You would become a state national, you would have the, the five-star passport, you would kill off all your contracts, and then you would, you would fill out a 1040NR form. And what that is, is that's, that's a, non, a U.S. non-resident alien income tax return form. This is it right here, 1040NR, right? Now, the 1040NR is, yo, broski, I'm a foreign entity to you. Uh, but but you and I are doing some business together as foreign entities, and um, you know, as per your laws, which I believe it's the truth. I believe 
if you're a foreign entity and you're making money for, I don't really know that that one you're going to have to look for yourself because no accountant's going to be able to help you with this. Um, you're going to need to do your own snooping, but I believe possibly you may, if you, if you're contracted to work with the federal government, depending on what area you're working with them in, I believe I could be wrong on this, but I believe that would be considered privileged income and you would have to file a, a tax return on that and it would be a 1040 NR. A 1040 NR keeps you uncontracted. So you're, you're saying, you're not saying I'm a US citizen, you're saying I'm a foreign entity, but I'm making money working for United States, right? And I wanna, I wanna pay the taxes on that income that I'm getting from United States. You know, you, you you may want to call them and ask them. You may want to, I don't really know. I, this is so kind of far beyond anything I've experienced. I'm just kind of trying to make this course kind of evergreen and, and try to answer as many questions as might come up. So um, let's say you're a police officer. I do believe if you're a police officer, technically you are um, working for the federal government because you're working for City of Los Angeles, which is a subcorporation of United States. So you're actually working for Washington, D.C. Um uh, let's say you're contracting with the police department or something like that. You may want to check into this because you, you may have to file a 1040 NR. Um, yeah, I don't really know all the details on that, but I'm just trying to spark your, spark your curiosity, spark your interest a little bit on that. Uh, that way you're kind of tracking. Okay. So, um, so look at this. This is really important. Section 308 of the INA, which is the um, uh, Immigration and Nationality Act, INA, right, says, it confers U.S. nationality but not U.S. citizenship on persons born in an outlying possession of the United States or born of a parent or parents who are non-citizen nationals who meet certain physical president presence or residence requirements. Now, born of a parent or parents who are non-citizen nationals. This is why on the DS-11 form, it asks you, parents, is your one parent a U.S. citizen? Yes or no. Is your other parent a U.S. citizen? Yes or no. Is your spouse a U.S. citizen? Yes or no. Now, just like uh, just like your boy uh, says on uh, Copper Moonshine Stills, I don't even know his name, the most, 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 most important thing you're going to do on this entire process by far is you're going to uh, put... Uh, no on both of those lines for, um, see, most important, check off no to U.S. citizen. No, no, no. Uh, the, the, the U.S. citizen part is the most important part of this whole thing. Uh, placing a yes in any of these boxes will instantaneously give you a three-star passport or below. Uh, the only way you can get access to the four or five star is by placing no. There's a bunch of other shit we're going to do too, but it's not as important as placing no. And that comes from the um, Immigration and Nationality Act, Section 341B, as in boy, of the Immigration and Nationality Act. And again, that talks of uh, is born of a parent or parents who are non-citizen nationals. Okay. Um, uh, when applying, applicants may execute a form DS-11, which is the one here, the one I was just showing you. It's a passport application form and show documentary proof of their non-citizen national status as well as their identity, right? So uh, uh, documentary proof of their non-citizen national status, uh, that's going to be your, your uh, and your identity, that's going to be your long form birth certificate. And then I used my driver's license when I went in to get my passport. Not the best thing in the world to use, but uh, the, the person who I went to see it was actually in a... Um, a post, a post office. And uh, she had done a few of these state national uh, forms before, but she was a little bit confused. I tried to give her a, a non-normal identification card. I tried to give her a state national 
identification card and she was just kind of confused. And I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep this simple. And I gave her the driver's license. You want to try to not use your driver's license as much as possible because your driver's license is, again, you don't need a driver's license. So by having one, you're basically admitting to the fact that you're a U.S. citizen by just having one and by using one. Uh, but in that case, just to keep things calm and just to keep keep things from getting out of hand or, or misunderstood or, or too crazy on that, uh, I, I had a bunch of other paperwork too that I was going to use as, as identifying, identifying documents with like a bunch of witnesses that had witness statements of knowing who I am and they were notarized and she was like willing to do it, but she was a little bit like confused and I was like, all right. She's like, you don't have a driver's license, do you? And I was like, Ugh. I was like, yeah, I do. And I got the five-star passport using the driver's license. Um, in the explanatory statement, which we're going to be going over, which is attached to the DS-11 form, uh, the explanatory statement is where you're going to put things like, you know, if I use a driver's license for this, uh, you know, I that, don't use that to make me a U.S. citizen because I'm really not. I just don't have any other way of, of making this simple. You can explain that in the explanatory statement, and I'll, I'll show that to you. So... Um, Okay, so uh, the main website here, you can go down, you can see all this information, or you can download the, um, the document. Uh, let's see here. This just gives you a bunch of other information on it. Interesting stuff. Um, the term state includes the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, Guam, Virgin Islands. Those are the territories, I believe, of United States, which is the District of Columbia. Um, anyways, we're going to close this now. Uh, and we'll go ahead and... Do we need this one? I don't think so. We'll close that one. Okay. So... Uh, so first and foremost, let's pull this bad boy up. So your first name uh, in box one. So first and foremost, up here, uh, this is the DS-11 form. You're going to get both the passport book and the passport card. So you're going to check both, right? Uh, you, you, uh, you can check regular or you can check the large book if you want. The large book is for those who are frequently traveling abroad using the passport um, and, and it's just bigger and it's got more visa pages. So if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling, you may want to look into getting the large book. And I, a lot of traveling means a fuck ton of traveling. Um, if the regular book is just the normal one that you see almost everybody has. So you're going to check one of those two boxes as well. I did regular book on mine. Uh, I don't travel out of the country hardly ever, literally ever. Like I think I've traveled out of the country like once. I'm not a, I'm not a real like internationally traveled person i've lived in i grew up on a farm in indiana and then i lived in chicago uh los angeles and new york and florida so i've met a lot of different cultures but i just haven't really been out of the country that much um so first name put your first name in there just normal i know you've been learning all this stuff i've been teaching you about you know all the human name and everything like that but just just for this purpose um fuck it right just do it like this first name here, last name is the top box. Middle name is Monroe. Uh, date of birth, you're going to put your date of birth in there. You're going to put male or female, or if you would like to, to, to take all of your rights and flush them straight down the toilet. Uh, there's a new box there now, as you saw uh, here. And that new box is an X. Uh, that means that you are a creature uh, in the law. So... If you want to go ahead and click that X box, no clue what that's going to do, but it's not going to be good. So ma uh, male or female, man or woman, uh, place of birth, you're going to put the, the, the city and the state. Uh, you are going to put your social security number. Technically, they can't ask you, uh, but even if you don't put it, they're going to put it anyways. So you can you put your social security number in here. You put your email address, your primary contact, phone number. Now, again, uh, care of means that I don't live here. I just receive mail here. 
So you're going to do in care of, and then you're going to put your address, your home address, and then you're going to put the city, the state, and the zip code, okay? And then here it says list any other names you've ever used, if you've ever had um, previous names or name changes, et cetera, okay? You do not write anything in this area. Uh, you don't sign anything. You don't mark anything. You don't fold the paper. You don't do jack shit. This is specifically for uh, the passport office or for the... Um, the postal postal office. Now, there's guys like David Strait and a lot of other guys that are teaching a lot of this information. They say to go straight to the main passport center, not to make an appointment and go to the post office. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. I, I went to a very, very uh, high traffic passport uh, post office. And uh, I, I went in and there was a, a, a lovely Asian woman and she tried to get me to do what's called the DS-82, which is a different form to basically just renew an expired passport. And I said, no, I said, I'm changing the type of passport that I have. And she's like, no, no. She's like, you need to do a DS-82. And I was like, I'm not doing a DS-82. I'm doing a DS-11 because I'm changing the type of passport that I have. And she had no fucking clue what I was talking about, right? And I was just like, listen, I'm not doing a DS-82. It's not happening. Oh, you need to do a DS. I mean, we went back and forth probably five times. And then finally she realized there's no fucking way I'm doing a DS-82, not in a million years. And she said, you need my boss. You need my boss. I said, yeah, take me to your leader. And uh, she took me to this uh, amazing black lady who had been there for you know 16 years. And uh, I laughed so fucking hard. Because she goes, oh, she says, state citizen. She says, without prejudice, right? And I was telling you, dude, like, I was really nervous because it's just like you feel like a 007 agent when you're doing some of this shit. I laugh so fucking hard. So without prejudice is the way you sign, right? So she had, she's like, oh, I've had a, a few people over the years come in and, and get these. And uh, she recognized what it was, but she recognized it based off of the, the signature line. And some people writing without prejudice. And and for some reason, that was like, without prejudice, right? <laughs> She's amazing. I laughed so hard. So um, as he says here, you don't underline anything. As it says here, I declare under, under penalty of perjury the following. Number one, I am a, a citizen or non-citizen national of the United States. Uh, obviously, it sucks because you're, you're, you're basically saying you're, you're kind of both or either one or whatever, right? They, they don't separate it out. From what I've read and what I've studied, it, they, a long time ago, they actually had a little selection boxes where you could actually select which type of, of citizenship status that you actually wanted. And you can actually just check box state citizen. And it was that easy. Well, now they make it a lot more complicated. Uh, do not underline it. They will deny you. That's what Copper Moonshine still says here, right? And uh, Copper Moonshine Stills, if you go back to his website, um, you'll see here passport information updated 12-20-2019. There might be another update at some point. So you should check this out uh, if, if you're doing this and it's a long, long time period from now. Again, this is uh, June 26, 2022. Yeah. there's so many people doing this shit right now and it's getting so crazy and so hot with all the craziness in the world and the vaccines. By the way, when you're a state national, all this vaccine shit, none of it applies to you at all whatsoever. None of it, nothing. So if you want to get your kids away from having to get vaccinated, if you want to get yourself away from having to be vaccinated, um, you do this process, they could pass all sorts of laws and they could pass shit that, that puts you in jail if you're not vaccinated, blah, blah, blah. It won't have anything to do with you. So you're completely outside of all of those statutes and those statutes have absolutely nothing to do with you whatsoever on the state level as well as on the federal level. So uh, this is how you protect yourself. Again, if you're not hurting anyone. Now, now, if, if they want to get real fucking crazy with the whole vaccine thing and let's say you get sick and then you go in public and somehow they can trace it down to because you were sick and because you were in public, you got other people sick technically that could be a violation of common law. So again, if, if you are going to be doing this kind of thing, you need to keep in mind all the time, uh, the, 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 the statutes and the government and the state government, they're sitting there and they're like a vacuum. Okay. They're trying to suck you in all the time. Right. 
if you if you do something that affects other people negatively or harms other people or harms their property, you're putting yourself at risk of being sucked back into the system. So keep that in mind. Uh, that is very important. For example, with all this crazy ass shit going on, if I got sick, eh, I probably wouldn't go out as much. I sure as fuck uh, would be, t- you know, you don't want to have your phone on you. You don't want to have any GPS type shit on you. Uh, you don't want anything that would tie you down to a location where they would have evidence that you harmed other people in any way, shape, or form. Um, a little bit overboard, but I'm just kind of giving you the idea. Uh, this is this is the basic idea of what you're getting yourself into when you do this. Um, so there you go. So um, moving on, uh, we have... Uh, after getting this passport, avoid traffic tickets and do not pay property taxes. Uh, so he says, do not pay property taxes here, right? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you in a later video how to create what's called an elodial title for your property. Um, he says here, don't pay your property taxes. I don't know about that. Uh, I know for a fact that once you create a superior title for your property, which I'm gonna teach you how to do, um, you will never have to pay property taxes again. Uh, He's saying here, when you get this, you don't need to pay property taxes anymore. Eh, I don't know about that, uh, but but whatever, uh, go for it. If there's something you want to do, go for it. Uh, just uncontract yourself with your county and stuff like that as best you can. An elodial title, which we're going to go over in a later video, uh, that's how you fully uncontract your property from the state, from the county, from everything. And then at that point, you no longer need permits to do anything with your property and you no longer need to pay property taxes. And the government entities and the police, uh, they need uh, uh, written approval to come on your property. Otherwise, uh, they can literally be shot or attacked legally. Uh, you you basically turn your property line, your it's called meets and bounds. You turn your property into a separate country, essentially legally. Right now, there is a bit of an issue with that too, though. Like for example, sewer hookups and things like that, and where the city kind of links into your property and the electrical poles and stuff like that. Um, it may become a little complicated in those areas where your property is connected up with uh, like public services, right? So if you plan on doing like an outhouse or something like that uh, or, or some kind of other plumbing idea and you plan on doing solar and stuff like that, that's how you go completely off the grid if you really want to. Um, if you if you don't want to do that, I would recommend that you go into the county and uh, and maybe work out a little deal with them maybe where you say, hey, I'm going to do this allodial title. Uh, I'm not going to be paying property taxes anymore, but I do still want to get su- sewer. How can I do that? What's the deal? Can I pay like uh, uh, payments on sewage or or it's just different for everybody. Like here, here we have uh, Los Angeles water and power. Maybe I would go to them and say, Hey, if I have an allodial title, uh, can I still get sewer and electrical and all this or check out your, uh, your contracts with them and look over the contracts and see kind of what the deal is. Every single area is different. So, uh, with all that kind of stuff, that's something a little separate that we're going to be getting into in a later video. But, uh, he does say you can stop paying him here. So I don't know. It's up to you, I guess. So this is um, uh, diplomatic immunity, state citizenship. He goes through all sorts of good stuff. Um, and uh, the 14th Amendment, yeah, he goes through that here. The Social Security SS5 form, case law, um, resident and citizen of the United States means 14th Amendment citizen. Um, yes, uh, and he goes through the difference between a U.S. citizen and a 14th Amendment citizen, which is the same thing and uh, what you actually really are, which is a state national and how that works. The state citizen, blah, 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 and he goes into the passport, he goes into black ink, uh, fill out the application in black ink as per the instructions. Uh, the most important thing to do, which is the checking no on the US citizen, as I showed you in the previous thing, putting in care of uh, with standard mailing address with the zip code. This is means merely where you receive your mail and do not live in their jurisdiction. Uh, and then for the permanent address, you don't sign this until you're in front of the person who's going to be uh, doing it with you, the post office or the or the person working at the um, the passport office. So keep in mind this without prejudice, UCC-1-308. Uh, you're going to write that uh, in front of the signature officer. So you can put it on like a little 
if you can't memorize it, you should memorize it. You can be, you should sign every goddamn thing under the sun with, without prejudice. Uh, not the UCC 1-308 part, but the without prejudice part, you should be signing on everything. But you can have like a little post-it note uh, and just write on it without prejudice. Um, I sign mine with the human name, uh, comma, beneficiary. Uh, I don't think that's, he's saying that that's necessary, but that's what I would do if I were you. So uh, I did it all lowercase, uh, Brandon hyphen Joe colon Williams comma beneficiary. And then with the, without prejudice, UCC 1-308 on top. That's how I did it. Okay. Um, so scrolling down to the back page, um, we have name of applicant on the second page. This is your name, but but keep in mind you wanna you wanna read this really carefully. You know what I did is I printed off a whole shitload of copies of the DS11, and I wrote one all the way to the bottom, and then I would uh, look it over and I'd be like, ah, eh, maybe this is a better way to do it. And I wrote another one and another one and another one. If I made any little mistakes or any little things that 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 I had to scratch or change in any way, I would just do another one. Uh, that's what I'd recommend. You want to you want this thing to be fucking perfect, okay? So no scratches, no weird bullshit, no, no scratch marks, no fucked up things you can't read. Like this has to be perfect. Every letter has to be perfect. Every single slash has to be perfect. Every number has to look just like, like no matter who they are or where they are, they have to be able to determine like, okay, that's exactly this letter and this number. Okay. So, um, you're putting your name, uh, last comma, first comma middle is how they want it done date of birth you want to do the exact way they tell you to do it which is two digits for the month slash two digits for the day slash uh four digits for the year okay per parent information uh, uh mother father parent first and middle name right joe don so first middle name and then last name is here date of birth for that parent if you don't have the date of birth for one of your parents, which is something that I ran into, uh, you can just leave that blank, okay? Or put or put N A N slash A. Uh, same with place of birth. But if you can locate it, you should put it in here. Um, Dallas, comma Texas. Uh, sex is male, a man or a woman. So uh, I don't know. I guess in this new brave new world. If you have a parent and they change their sex at some point in their life because they decided they didn't like their rights because they were sure pesky rights, human rights, um, put whatever gender they were when they were born, their original gender on the form. I don't, it, the fact that I even have to say that is fucking pathetic. But uh, The second part, uh, U.S. citizen obviously is no. That's the most important thing on the entire form. Uh, Jane Sally uh, Barron is the next one here. Date of birth for her. If you don't have it, put an A or leave it blank. Uh, same thing with place of birth. If you don't have it, put an A or leave it blank. It's a female at birth. U.S. citizen is no. Uh, have you ever been married? If you, if you, now it doesn't say are you married. You got to be very, very careful with these questions. You want to read these questions very carefully. Have you ever been married? He says yes on this form. Uh, if yes, complete the remaining items in number 11. So you have, I was married to Brenda Marie Smith. Her date of birth, if you don't have it, leave it blank or put N-A. Uh, place of birth, if you don't have it, uh, put leave it blank or put N-A. Plano, Texas. Uh, is she, uh, it doesn't say is she or was she. It just says U.S. citizen. That's all it says. Uh, no. It's always no. Always. If they asked you this question 567 times, you'd say no 567 times. Uh, date of marriage. When were you married? Have you been widowed or divorced? Um, if you were, then you put the divorce date. If you're not sure, put, put NA or, or just leave it blank. Okay. Uh, additional contact info, uh, uh, additional contact is like a friend or a family member or something like that. Uh, what's your occupation now, according to the stuff I've read occupation, certain occupations can, can be bad. So, um, I don't I don't really know all the details on that. I would try to keep this really vague and simple. Uh, if you do anything in a business at all, I would just put administrator. Um, if you do anything in sales, just put sales. If you do, um, you know, if you're a welder, you put welder. Like just keep it really, really simple and vague. 
uh, employer or school if applicable. You can put something in there if you want or just leave it blank or put NA. It, it does say at the beginning of the form, anything that you leave blank could uh, make it uh, take longer to get it approved. So you can just put NA. That's what I did. I put NA in every single box uh, rather than leaving it blank because I, I read that on the form, okay? So he put here subpar welding. Uh, your height. I did I did foot and inches. He did he did 70 inches. I did like six foot one inch on mine. Uh, the foot symbol is just the one little line up top, and then the inches symbol is the two little lines. And you can you can type those on your like the one line is the same as like when you do apostrophe s. So that single apostrophe would be the feet, and then the quotations would be the inches. That's how I did it, right? Uh, hair color, eye color, travel plans. Uh, I put N A here for travel plans because I don't, I didn't have any travel plans. Uh, I just wanted a five star passport for diplomatic immunity, right? Uh, so I put N A N A N A for all three of these countries to be visited, right? Permanent address. Now this is really important. Again. You don't want to put anything in here that would trick you into 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 winding up in the uh, jurisdiction of the um, the District of Columbia, right? So you put in here rule free delivery. It means you do not live in the in the District of Columbia or any fictional area. Fictional meaning incorporated. Incorporated means fiction. It means bullshit. It means uh, it means fake law uh, law manufacturing, artificial. That's what it means. Uh, fictional. Okay, it is fictional. Uh, humans, uh, men and women, and humans are are real, and then all this other shit everywhere is all fictional. Okay, so uh, Dallas. Uh, I I was very very specific about this part here. Um, uh, Texas. I put I put instead of C A because it's it's copyrighted or trademarked. I put California. And actually, now that I think about it, um, uh, just to go back a little bit, now that I think about it, on uh, on place of birth, on place of birth, I did uh, I did mine a little differently. Um, now that I think about it, I think on place of birth for both of my parents, I put. Um, I think I put Indiana unincorporated or I put America unincorporated. I'm not sure that's really going to matter a whole lot, but um, that's what I did on mine, just as a little side note. Uh, I did get a five-star passport, but a lot of other people have too. So um, so rule free delivery, uh, Dallas, Texas, I would strongly recommend you write out your entire state here. It's going to look kind of sloppy. You're going to start like for New Jersey or some of the like longer, longer words like California. I wrote it like kind of at an angle. So I started here and I did California and I went all the way across diagonally across the box. Uh, I just think it's better. And then the zero, all zeros for the zip code, zero, 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 right? Emergency con contact, uh, Brenda Marie Smith, uh, whatever Dallas. Now this one, you can write whatever you want because you're not, this isn't about you and, and where your residence is. So this one's not uh, risky to type the, the two, uh, you just do CA. I think on mine, I wrote California out entirely, but whatever. On this one, it doesn't really matter. I'm trying to get you to actually understand all this stuff and not just uh, like mechanically go through all this shit. Because again, if you don't understand all this stuff and you're just mechanically going through all this, it's risky because if they ever challenge you in any way uh, and they realize you don't know shit, eesh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in that situation if I were you. Um, you don't need to know everything under the sun, moon, and stars. I think, I think everything in this course is pretty much everything you're going to need to know to, to stand on your own two feet to some degree. Um, so, you know, uh, relationship as wife, have you ever been issued a U.S. passport? book or passport card. Now this section here, I did yes on mine. I had never had a card before, but I had had a book. So I said yes. And I dug my book out from my thing. And I put my name as printed in the book. I put my passport number from the old book and I put my issue date from the old book. It was expired. Um, and then status of your most recent passport book, uh, I put submitting with application. So you're sacrificing and giving up your old book uh, with the new DS-11. Uh, 
and then they take the old book, they destroy it. Actually, actually, it's funny. They, they actually sent it back to me after they gave me my five star. They sent me back my old passport too. Now that I think about it, so that's kind of funny. Um, so you're submitting it with the application, okay? Uh, if you lost it or it was stolen, uh, or if it's in your possession but you're not sure where it's located, like in your room or maybe in your bags, but it's expired. You have those three selections here too. Stolen, lost, in my possession, if expired, right? Do not write below this line for issuing office only. Interesting stuff. Take a look. We have birth certificate, SRCR. What do these things mean? Natural citizen, naturalized maybe, certificate, USCIS, USDC. That's the United States District of Columbia. Uh, report of birth, file place, passport. Look at all these symbols. Uh, this is all just a tricky way of them, uh, knowing, you know, kind of what it is and, uh, not telling us, right? Um, same thing up here. You have a, uh, the first page, you have a D an O an S an N F R. Uh, I don't know what all that means. Maybe you could ask them. Um, you have, uh, That one, there's nothing really too interesting there. It doesn't look like. What is this? Let's see. Anyways, so that 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 covers the DS11. Um, just to come back to me for a moment. So so that's the DS11 form. That is the application. Now, if you do that entire application the way I, I just described to you, which is from Copper Moonshine Stills. Um, even if you do nothing else, uh, at all, and you don't attach a long form birth certificate and you don't, um, attach an explanatory statement and you do like literally fucking nothing else at all whatsoever, you can submit that bad boy in, uh, and you should get a four star passport just off that alone. Right. Um, if you if you if you want to do that, you can do that. Uh, that is, um, the easy way to get a four star. I mean, going from three to four stars is a fucking huge jump. Okay, I don't really know how much more of a jump it is from four to five. I don't. All the there's like all the information is like secret. Like you can't even find the information. There's like redacted sections of like their own books and shit that people have tried to file, uh, like Freedom of Information Act requests, and they always get denied. So, um, how much of a jump is there between the four and the five? I don't really know. But if you're like, damn dog, like I want like the fast track, like with the art with the re revocation of election when you were talking about that form fifty six and it was easy and cheap and free. Boy, I want I want some more of that shit. Uh, if that's what you want, then just send that bitch the way it is and get your four star passport. If you don't have a passport at all, uh, fuck it. Just send it in. Cause once you get that four star passport, you can basically just get rid of your, uh, your driver's license. That's how you kill the driver's license, right? Do we put that on here? So, uh, the, the passport kills off the citizenship one. And honestly, it kills off a lot of things. Like I said, it's this giant bomb, right? But it also, uh, we didn't have it on this list, the driver's license, right? It also kills that contract as well. Now, uh, you can still have a driver's license. You need a driver's license to like rent cars and stuff like that. So you can still have a driver's license. You just don't necessarily need it uh, for traveling purposes, for non-commercial, private, non uh you know, if, if you if you are if you are driving to a location of which you're gonna be doing business, you're not you're not actively in the the actual active commerce at that moment when you're driving that vehicle. If you are getting paid and someone says, I'll pay you fifty bucks to to go and pick up a bunch of tools and bring them back to me, that's a bit tricky, right? Uh, you're better off wording that contract in a way where it's like, um, uh, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with traveling or 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 moving or or moving objects through an automobile uh, for money, right? Anything you can do 
to get away from the fact that you are involved in commerce at the moment you're driving your vehicle, as long as you stay away from that, you can use the passport for all traveling purposes. If you are an Uber driver, if you are a big rig driver, if you are transporting things for money and it's like obvious, if you're using a, a company vehicle, uh, any of these things that would place you directly and exactly inside of commerce, you can't, um, you have to have a driver's license, okay? So, um, uh, with that said, uh, now we're going to cover the explanatory statement. Okay. Now I bought this explanatory statement from, um, from, uh, James Lovett and I, um, edited the fuck out of it, but basically this is his, um, this is his his deal and you should buy a copy uh yesterday i think it was we were trying to go to his website and we couldn't get it to load so if for some reason his website's down up oh, there we go boom yeah boy oh wow he did a bunch of upgrades on the colors and shit that's probably why it was down here's your boy so I hope he doesn't get too pissed if he ever sees this because I'm gonna I'm gonna show. But I did I made a lot of adjustments to this document. Um, so I hope that he is happy uh, with that. And if for some reason his documentation or something happens to his website or something like that, or I don't know, I, I may at some point in time place my explanatory statement uh on my uh on my website but for right now uh this is what i would like to do i'd like to support james great guy he's helped me a lot um i would recommend that you go on to his website you go to the file section you scroll down and you're going to see explanatory statement master combo uh, he has like a short version of the explanatory statement and he has a master copy, which is like 15 pages. That's the one that I bought and used. Um, if you, for some reason you cannot purchase this or for some reason this link goes down or something happens or if it can't work or if something ever happens at that point, I probably will just post the one that I have that I've made massive adjustments to uh, on my website for free and just give it away. Uh, but I, I, at this point in time, I'd like to... Um, support him. So this is the file that you're going to get when you purchase from him. You have the, um, your, your own address at the top. You have, uh, not general processing, special attention, legal department processing, uh, United States department of state for state citizen, U S national passport explanatory statement to the commissioner, head director, uh, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Uh, clarifying a bunch of things, uh, clarifying different uh, sections 8 USC uh, 1101, 22B, um, 8 USC 1101, let's see, 8 USC 1101, what is this? 22B, what is this? You can get other explanatory statements too um, from other places. So I'm not telling you that you have to um oh he's saying 22b a person who though not a citizen of the united states owes permanent allegiance to the united states uh oh i think he's saying that's not what i am oh he's just giving the exact quote okay so um uh I have new information. I'm applying for a new thing and blah, blah, blah to the processing agent reading my file, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have allegiance to God, blah, blah, blah. Uh, specifying that, you know, the social security number, putting that into the form doesn't like fuck me over or contract me into anything. Uh, Privacy Act section. Uh, please note, this is my proper nationality. Uh, and, and you're saying, where was I born and, and where do I live now? And I made a bunch of adjustments to this section. Um, 14th amendment citizen, he, you know, he's putting all the stuff here, what I am, what I am not. You're clarifying things, clarifying things. Uh, lots of quotes, uh, case law, uh, Supreme court documentation. Um, uh, being an Indianaan, uh, 
Oh, is this? Uh, let's see here. 28 USC. Let's see this one here. No. You know, I swear that I'm an Indiana in, or I was born in Indiana in, and now I am a Californian. Uh, here's a bunch of different uh, official national status, non-person, non-enemy combatant, non-taxpayer. Again, a taxpayer is someone who's a U.S. citizen, and they're also uh, a SESTA-K trust, as per that one quote that I showed you before from Henry Bolins, the court case Henry Bolins. So by saying you're a non-taxpayer, you're also in that same breath saying, I'm not a U.S. citizen and I'm not a SESTA-K trust, which you definitely want to make sure you say. So I know it's a bit scary to tell people that you're a non-taxpayer, but if you don't do it, you're, you're risking being pulled back into the system. So you are a non-taxpayer, non-alter ego, meaning the trust name in all capital letters, non-resident alien, non-federal employee, non-individual, non-commercial, non-dead entity, non-public transmitting utility. Um, a public transmitting utility, uh, that's basically... Um, so, so a fiction can only speak to a fiction and a human can only speak to a human. So the, a public transmitting utility is something that's used in between uh, 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 non the same action. So if, if, a, if, a, if a corporation wants to speak to a human, uh, uh, they have to use a, a public transmitting utility to do so. That's why they put your name in all capital letters on all of the documentation in order to avoid having to do all that. Uh, because they're not speaking to a human, they're speaking to the trust. So they don't have to use a public transmitting utility at that point because uh, the trust and the corporation are considered to be basically the same level uh, in law, right? So uh, you're, you, you can go through and clear up all these words if you want to. You can go into the dictionary. Now, again, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the course. I've mentioned this on a lot of the other stuff that I do as well as my um, – I have some training videos on my website. I have one right now. I'm going to be working on another one soon. Uh, you shouldn't sign anything you don't understand, and you shouldn't notarize anything you don't understand. So, so you know, take some time. Uh, read through this whole thing. You will learn so much about your country and about your past and about what it means to be a, an American. You'll learn more reading this fucking document that was written by James Lovett than you will, and you could have a PhD in American history, and and I swear to God, you're probably going to know more after going through this fucking thing. Uh, how much time is it going to take you to go through this and clear up all the different definitions and look over all the different statutes? Um, no, not some ungodly amount of time. Maybe maybe you know, 15, 20 hours of 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 effort. I mean. Is that worth it? Uh, 25 hours of effort? I mean, is your is your entire freedom from all police and all tax authorities worth 20 hours of, of your time? If it's not, I mean, you're in the wrong place, man. You're, you're in the wrong course. You probably want to go down at the grocery store and grab a nice big fat cucumber and jam that fucking cocksucker right up your ass um, because this ain't the place for you. So um, I do recommend... That you go through this, uh, you do read all of it. You're going to learn so much. It's worth a hundred dollars just to just to go through this and learn everything. Um, the Department of State website uh, information, Section 302 of Public Law, uh, all sorts of stuff. Here's some here's some family lineage stuff. Here's uh, Congress definitions of terms, uh, civil status, uh, clarification of my status. Um, Clarification of my status, all sorts of good stuff in here. Uh, all sorts of good stuff, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, this is where it starts to get obviously pretty thick. Um, and then we're going to skip over some pages. Uh, national, um, it, there's from CFR 51.2. There's some quotes there, pledging allegiance to the flag. And then the very end, this is the um, the affidavit part where you, you sign with a notary. Uh, stating the fact that you know this is under under i swear uh my allegiance to the de jure state of california um and the united states of america republic uh furthermore to the constitution of the usa and geographical usa to protect and serve um and then you sign 
uh, in front of a notary, and then the notary places the seal. Okay, this is what I did. So this is what an explanatory statement looks like. I skipped a bunch of it because I don't want you pausing the video and taking it. Um, I would like you to support James. Love it. Uh, great guy. Uh, would like to see him. Uh, you know, you can buy all of his documents. I think he has a whole package deal. You can buy all of his documents for cheap, maybe 600 bucks. Um, I consider that to be nothing compared to what you're getting. You're getting everything under the sun, moon, and stars. So, um, again, blacksite32.com. He has a ton of really great YouTube videos as well. You can type his name into YouTube. Uh, James C. Lovett, I believe is his name, right? James C. Lovett. Yeah, James C. Lovett, right? Uh, the Bad Wolf. Uh, in, in all honesty, uh, he has a lot more to offer, but I, I like Christopher Hauser's stuff more. I think it's more engaging and it has more depth to it, and he's just more of a fucking wild, wild crazy man. Uh, James C. Lovett is definitely uh, a little more conservative. He's definitely a little more chill. Um, he's a lot less combative, which I do like about James C. Lovett a lot. Uh, Christopher Hauser in his earlier videos is very combative, and then he sort of chills out throughout the videos to the end of the videos right so uh, i do recommend the master combo um and then if you do want to get the full package uh what is it let's see here um here it is order all u.s national finals listed above includes the combo um 500 bucks for everything and that includes uh uh UCC1, which is filing a lien on your trust name, your all capital letter trust name, which prevents people from like uh, fucking with it and billing it. It's a way of taking control of your all capital letters name, which I'm not going to get into in this course because uh, I have not done it. I'm actually about ready to do it uh, very soon. I'm not a big fan of, of talking about things that I haven't done. Uh, right to travel files. This is a binder that you're going to put together and put into your vehicle uh, that goes over the right to travel in your private automobile uh, when you're not uh, doing active commerce while driving the vehicle. Uh, uh, cancellation of account to pull your information out of the DMV. Uh, I don't know exactly what that is. I have done a bunch of stuff on DMV related activities, but I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about here with this. It has something to do with that. You have the explanatory statement master combo for the um, the, uh, the 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 passport, uh, and then you have chief of police, cop, and judge letter. This is for tickets or traveling or court. Uh, 50 plus ways to win in a court case. This is cool. This is just kind of like a document that has all these different ways you can win in a court case. Uh, affidavit of U.S. nationality. This is to uh, send to your Secretary of State and a bunch of other places. And uh, affidavit of health and life file. This is actually, I believe, because I, I bought all these, I haven't had a chance to look at everything. I believe this one is uh, how to create your own birth certificate out of thin air and stuff like that. So uh, actually, now that I think about it, this is good. I'm glad I went through this. So, so if for some reason you, you, you are, you are a kid and you don't have a birth certificate and your parents never signed for a birth certificate. Uh, I believe inside this file package, you can create your own birth certificate and you can file it with the state. Uh, that would be the way to get the five-star passport. Good. Uh, I was worried about that. I was trying to figure out how the fuck someone would do that because you're going to start seeing that more and more in society with all this shit blowing up. So the kid gets to be 18. Uh, he says, I want to get a, a five-star passport. Uh, he would get something like this. He would learn how to create his own birth certificate from scratch. Uh, he would send that birth certificate in to, I'm assuming he would either get it filed uh, somewhere uh, as a court of record kind of a thing, or I don't know if he would just take it into the Secretary of State or what he would do exactly. And then once it's filed, I'm assuming once it's filed, then he would send a copy of it with the uh, the passport. Um, and then that's how someone with no birth certificate would get a five-star passport. Good. Good. Okay. So uh, what are the um, what are the three things that's needed uh, to review on this on this um, on this video? Uh, let me see if there's anything else to go over here. Uh, uh, no. So what are the three things that a person has to have in order to get their, their, uh, their five-star passport? Number one, 
They have to fill out the DS-11 form correctly. I try explaining every single box in great detail. That way you guys, no matter what they change on the DS-11, hopefully you can still figure it out. They probably maybe will change something if they, if they need to. Uh, number two, you need an explanatory statement. If you want to get a four-star passport, you don't need an explanatory statement. You just send that bitch in, the DS-11, just like it is. Um, I paid $300. That included uh, overnight shipping, one day air, which was like 60 bucks. And that also included like an extra 80 bucks for uh, priority processing. Um, I had my five-star passport in my hands about 12 days after I was at the, um, uh, maybe 10, 10 or 12 days after I was in the post office. Okay. Um, if you want to go on the cheap, you can probably do it for, uh, don't order any long form birth certificates or if you, if you already have, and you don't want to wait any longer, uh, don't buy the explanatory statement. Don't do anything. Go in. Don't, don't even buy. If you really want to go cheap, 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 don't buy, uh, the priority shipping. Don't buy the, uh, priority processing. Uh, it could take, I don't even know, maybe two months for you to actually get your passport. Uh, but at that point, uh, you're looking at maybe 160 or 170 bucks for everything. Um, again, if you're not willing to pay 170 bucks for total fucking freedom from literally every contract uh, on this list, you're fucked in the head and I have no clue why you're here. Uh, so... Yeah, if uh, if you have the money, I I went for the I wanted everything. I wanted everything as fast as humanly possible. Um, there there is one other thing I could go over with you. I suppose um, if you live near a passport center, you can purchase a flight to an international location uh, like Russia or any place out of the country. Ideally, some place you can't drive to. That way, it's like really really obvious that you need a plane. Uh, let's say you book something for like three weeks out or like two weeks out. Um, and then you print off the receipt of the flight you just booked and then just cancel the flight. If you have that receipt and it says that you need to fly somewhere in like two or three weeks, you can call up the main, main, main passport center and you can get like a, a, a same day or like right away emergency appointment. And you can take in the DS 11 and do all the same shit. Uh, you can give it to them and, and they'll, they'll give you a the passport like the same day or the next day or something like that. So, uh, cause when I, when I booked for my passport appointment, it was like three or four weeks out. So if you don't want to wait that long to get your passport, that's kind of like a secret backdoor way, but you would need to live near some kind of major passport center or be willing to travel to one. And again, David straight recommends that you go straight to the passport center that you do not, um, uh, go to the post office. I mean, I had success in the post office, so uh, whatever. You know, there's a chance that you may spend 160 bucks and then you only get a three star for some weird fucking reason. I don't know. Uh, if that happens, I would do it again, but at a different location if you can. I know that sucks because you just wasted 160 bucks, but again, <laughs> for total fucking freedom, uh, <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't freak out and like try to, I don't know. I would just I would just pay the money and just do it again. Now, if you pay the money and you do it again, it's still fucked up and you're 100% sure you did it all right. All right. Uh, at that point, I'd probably give them a call or go to a main passport center and be like, look, like I tried to fill this out in this way and, and I'm just not getting the kind of passport that I never heard of any of these kind of problems coming up. So um, I don't think it'll be a problem for you. But uh Okay, that's uh, that's it for the passport video. I think I've covered everything I want to cover. You will get the book. You will get the. Um, so, oh, uh, there is actually one more thing. So, so you, I did the five stars. So I submitted the long form birth certificate. I submitted my old passport, which isn't required, but that's how I did it. I submitted the explanatory statement. Now they send you back your old passport. They sent me back my old passport. They sent me back. Uh, my uh, certificate of life birth. They sent that back to me. They did not send the explanatory statement back to me. So the cool thing about getting that master file is I believe they actually file that document uh, in your main file. And it's like that affidavit, that big, bad, sexy, bad wolf, James C. Lovett explanatory statement is... Um, filed in your file so it's like that thing is powerful i think that thing clarifies 
your situation and your birth and everything up and down, left, right, and center. So uh, that is a beautiful thing to have filed in your file, and that is a massive level of protection for any sort of um, challenging of your nationality or anything like that in the future. But again, no one's going to challenge your nationality. Like, I'm telling you, like, you, you think that in your head, but it's just like that's not how it works. They're sitting there chilling, cucumber in ass, coffee in hand, just taking people's documents and updating their shit on the computer. That's all they do. That's all any of these people do. So there's no no reason to be combative. Um, there's no reason to really do anything except just quietly and calmly kill off your contracts, change your status. When we say change your status, this video, uh, the revocation of election video and this video is the first, uh, the main huge section of changing your status. Once you do the revocation of election, we've already gone over that. And once you do this passport process, you're you are you are really uh, pulling out of the matrix big time. I mean, you are massively in a whole nother category of of human. I mean, whether it's a four star or a five star doesn't even matter. Five star is is obviously bigger and huger and more awesome and better. But even even if you just did the form fifty six and the four-star passport, even if you just did it like that, oh my God, I mean, you're, you're talking massive increase in status, humongous. Like I said before, if you're, if you're African descent, if you're black, oh my God, I mean, you, just those two things alone, I mean, you are just slamming into the stratosphere in terms of status and stuff like that. So, um, uh, whatever's best for you, whatever whatever matches your pocketbook, whatever it is that you want to put the time and effort into, uh, I think I've broken everything down pretty good, giving you a lot of uh, options to, to do this the easy way or the hard way uh, in both respects. And uh, I will see you at video number, uh, this was video number 11, right? Yeah, this is video number 11. And I'll see you at video number 12. See you soon.